Hello and welcome to the North Carolina Museum of History and the second annual Education Day in conjunction with our African American Cultural Celebration, which is in its 22nd year. Our presenter, Jonathan Daniel, will begin in just a moment, but we want to start with a few notes. Remember, you can ask questions in the chat and we'll do our best to share them with the presenter. We thank the following sponsors of the North Carolina Museum of History Foundation, helping to make this event possible. Jonathan Daniel, an artist and youth leader, is originally from Zimbabwe, where he learned to create toys with his imagination and the things found around him, including wire. Today, his wire art and other items inspire many to imagine and build. Welcome, Jonathan. What are you sharing with us today? Good morning. Good morning, children. My name is Jonathan Daniel. I was born and raised in Zimbabwe. So I wanted to show you guys how you greet me as sometimes you say, Mr. Daniel, Mr. Jonathan, but in Zimbabwe, I'm known as Mukoma Jonathan, which means big brother Jonathan. So I want to greet you all and say hello. Before I start, I want to give a shout out to my hero. His name is Tembo. He's 14 years old and he's my son, my only son. Anyway, and he's at home with his mom and uh, they are watching this as we go. But Tembo, I want to say you're my hero because Tembo can do everything, almost what I do, he do even better. Anyway, I want to start with, I was born and raised in Zimbabwe and I was born with nothing. I was a kid who was born with no toys to play with at all. But imagination helps me, help me to become who I am today. So today I'm going to show you what life was like growing up without stuff. So one of the things I'm going to show you is growing up in Zimbabwe was mostly I would find trash. This little bottle here was my best friend. What did I do with it? I played with it. Yes, this was my everything. This was my toy. But it was through this toy, through this trash, that I made into something of fun. So I'm going to introduce you today of what I did and how I've become an artist that I am today. So have a lot of questions at the end of the day. I'm going to ask you to, if you have any questions, to ask me questions, okay? So this was my toy. You can just imagine, that's all I had. What did I do with it? I kicked it around, I threw it around, and I roll it on the ground, play with it, and make sounds like beep, 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 beep like a car. But then one day, a light bulb came on. Ding, 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 ding. And I was like, wait a minute. What if I take a nail and punch a hole through this bottle? And that's what I did. And I punched through here. And I said, okay, let me take a stick and put it through. And I found a straw and I put it in there and I pushed it. It went well. And then the stick broke. And I was like, oh, I said, like, wait a minute. What if I take a piece of wire? And hey, I took a piece of wire. I put it through the hole and came out this way. And I bend it up here. And then I roll it. This thing started rolling. And I said, wait a minute, what if I set another bottle on top? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm about to show you my first toy ever. You guys ready to see it? Here we go. So this was what I made from coming up with this. So I created this. So I made this thing so that I could push it. So if I was standing up, you'd push it. But check this out. I figured out if I put another bottle on top of this bottle, and when you spin it, when you, when you push it, everything spins. So check this out. So I created my first toy, uh, trash toy to push around. So I started walking around pushing this little toy wherever I went. And guess what? You know how kids are? They named me a uh, trash boy. You know why? Because I was always picking trash and creating toys wonder toys to play with so i my nickname was trash boy so this helped me become who i am today so i want to say in the middle of this lesson children never give up never ever ever give up always keep trying and striving to do better it doesn't matter what you have and remember I know some of you, you want to be like Michael Jordan, you want to be like Kobe Bryant, you want to be like all these athletes who are amazing people in our world, who are our celebrities. But guess what? You can never measure up. 
You know why? Because you were created to be yourself. You need to figure out in yourself, within yourself, what are you good at? These other celebrities, they figure out what they were good at and they excelled in it. Well, you were not them. You were created to be you. So you need to figure out what exactly were you created for and what are you going to do before you leave this world? You need to make a dent. You need to make an impact in this world, okay? So this is what I did. So it from this, it developed into other things. So I started creating other things, making things out of this trash, okay? And um, one of the other things was I created, um, watch this. My dad gave me this. This is an ax, okay, to cut trees with. But this is a special ax. It's an ax that is used for carving. Okay, my dad gave me this and he said, son, with this, you can create any toys you want in the world. Well, guess what, ladies and gentlemen, I carried this over my shoulder wherever I go. And I was so proud of it. And every time I look in the trees and I saw a tree, I envision what kind of a toy to carve out of it. And of course, I grew up on a farm. And on a farm, there are machineries. Some of you will know what kind of machineries you find on the farm. One of those machineries, which is very, very important, is a tractor. I saw this tractor and man, I wish I had one. But of course, I couldn't have one. And guess what? I created my own. I took this, I cut a tree, and I carved what I thought it looked like a tractor. And that's what I want to show you today. So this was my tractor. I created it. Okay, of course, it's painted. I painted everything. But in Zimbabwe, we didn't have paint. As a kid, I didn't have paint. So what did we do? Guess what? We have leaves that the nature God gave us through the trees. And so those trees, some of the, uh, the, the leaves are what? Green. And of course, I painted green. And then, of course, some of them are yellow flowers. And I painted yellow, like what you see there. Okay? So that's how I became. But look at this. This was not only a thing I made, but this is something that you could push around. So check. And the wheel turns and you'll be pushing it around. And I started pushing around, driving whatever I thought was my toy. This is how I created my toy. Well, soon the kids started becoming my friends. They all wanted to be my friend. And of course, I was there to help them and push the, and, and help them create their own toys of wonder. And so it all continued and continued. And I started also venturing into wire. Wire was my best friend. Check this out. I created this guy. I saw somebody riding a bicycle, and I always cried for a bicycle, but I couldn't have a bicycle. My mom and dad couldn't afford to buy me a bicycle. So guess what? I took pieces of wire, and I created what I thought was a, a man on a bicycle. But I had to put wheels on it because he had to simulate what a bicycle person does. So check this out. You put a piece, I put a piece of... Uh, uh, stick here and then I can push this so check this out when you push it look my bicycle man cycles see this this is how I got started and I got inspired by making things out of nothing but wire and trash isn't that cool it looks like a person riding a bicycle doesn't it yes so then um I continued to develop and develop and one of my favorite toy ever is this one here. I carved it and first of all, before I show it to you, I'm going to ask you a, qu a question. What is the fastest animal on planet Earth? Yeah, you all know it's cheetah. Do you know why he's the fastest? I can give you an answer. Because he cheats. He's a cheetah. He cheats everything. He's not fastest. No, I'm just kidding. But he is fastest. But what is the slowest animal on planet Earth? And I know some of you have guessed it right, a turtle. Well, check this out. I carved a turtle and check this out. I painted it. It's made out of wood. But check this out. I wanted to create something that simulates, that resembles a turtle when, it, when it's walking around. But check this out. You guys are going to love this. Watch. This is what a turtle does, doesn't it? Here we go. That's what a turtle does. So that's what I created out of wood and wire and i'm hoping some of you guys are already their mind is already spinning ideas are spinning that's what i want i want you to start thinking think 
outside the box. That's what you guys need to do, okay? And then let me show you something else. Oh, check this out. I created something. Look, I saw one day a drama. And I was like, wait a minute. I'm going to push, make me a drama out of wood and wire. But look what mine does. As he's moving, he's, he, he, he's drumming. See that? That's another thing I did. I know you guys, you think hard, and I want you to go outside and be use your imagination. Be creative. Make stuff out of stuff. Like my son, like I told you, my son Tembo, he makes stuff with everything. I mean, duct tape, you name it. He creates amazing stuff. Some of the stuff he creates, I'm like, where did you learn that? Because I've never done that before. You know why? Because he's using his imagination and i want you guys to use your imagination to create stuff and then one of the things i also made was ah this one here you guys are gonna love it so in zimbabwe we have people who are called poachers sometimes they 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 kill these animals uh for their hide and their horn and i was just thinking one day i was like man if i was mama of that animal and someone does that They'll have to pay for it. Well, guess what? The animal that people always come and put in danger is this animal here, a rhino. You see it's got a, a horn? Well, here we go. Here's enemy number one. As you can see, in his hand, he's got his weapon. And in the other side, he's got the horn, which means he's taken a life of Papa Rhino. Well, Mama Rhino is not happy. Mama Rhino said, you did what? to my husband, and you left me with a, a child without a father to take care of? Mama Rhino said, you better watch your back. Well, the man looked at, at the rhino and was in horror. And he went, ah, help me. <coughs> Let's check this out. He's being chased, watch. He's running away. <coughs> he's running away. So this is my comical toy. See, he's running away from the rhino. So that's how I, what I started doing. I started just hearing of stories and creating the story with a wire and um, wood. So I'm hoping you guys, by hearing my story, you'll be also encouraged to be creative. And one of the other thing is in Zimbabwe, transportation. You guys, you come to school every day. Mom and dad brings you to school in a car or you go on a bus. They come and pick you and go to school in a bus or some of you have your bicycles. You ride to school, your bicycle. Well, and some of you, you actually walk to school. Mom and dad walk you to school. Well, guess what? In Zimbabwe, we don't have that privilege because our schools are not close by. So most of the schools we go to, some the school I went to was 12 miles away and I had to walk. Guess what? I had to get up and get ready and leave for school, which started at 8, and I would leave around 4.30 every morning. And I would walk, jog, run. Walk, jog, run until I get to school. By the time I got to school, I was dusty, I was smelly, I was sweaty. You guys don't have to do that because mama takes you in a car. Well, guess what? The other means of transportation in Zimbabwe is an ox pulling a cart and i would see an ox pulling a cart and i would look at it and say man that's awesome then a light bulb came on ding 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 hey i could carve a cow and a cart and simulate what a cow does when he pulls and that's exactly what i did so usually you find a man sitting on a cart with a whip in his hand and he whips the cow if he whips the cow to the right the cow tends to the left. If he, keep, he whips it to the left, it tends to the right. It goes where he wants. And when I saw that, I was mesmerized. And check this out. I created my own. I carved it. Check this out. Here it is. There is a man sitting on the cut. And as you can see, the cut is made out of wood. And of course, the man himself is made out of wood. And the cow is made out of wood. But there's wires also in it. But check this out. He's got a whip in one hand. Ah, he whips the cow and the cow moves. So check this out. Let's go, cow. Let's go. Watch. See? So I created this. Similarly, what a cow and a man on a cart would do. So usually, sometimes, 
if people were wealthy, they would use this cart to take their children to school in a cow being, um, in a cut being drawn by a cow. And you guys have cars. But guess what? One of the things I noticed is that you kids here in America, you have no idea how blessed you are and how much you have. You complain about little things. Some of you, guess what? I've, I've actually come to realize this, that one time I was at a school teaching like I am today, and then uh, Jimmy couldn't come to school. Jimmy's mom called the school and talked to the teacher and said, hey, this is Jimmy's mom. Uh, my car won't start, so I won't be, Jimmy won't be coming to school today. And the teacher said, okay. And then I looked at the teacher and said, how far does Jimmy live? And she said, oh, three blocks away from the school. I was like, what? Three blocks away, the car won't start, and Jimmy won't, will miss school? In Zimbabwe, we walked 12 miles to school. You go to Zimbabwe anytime, you see kids everywhere walking. They don't even have a bus, they don't even have a bicycle. They have no cars to take them to school. They walk to school. Mama, Jimmy needs to be in school, it's important. There's no reason why he should stay at home, just because the car won't start. Oh, come on. All right, so that's me growing up. But ladies and gentlemen, I want to show you what this has taken me to. Of course, I used to make these trash toys. But you know what? I became a creator, an artist. I started creating things, inventing things bigger than just this. This would be what I call my toys, my trash toys. But then I started creating stuff that if I started taking beads and wire and making together, you would look and say, whoa, how did he do that? Well, boys and girls, I'm about to show you that, that I've turned this trash stuff into something marvelous, something wonderful. Are you guys ready to see what I do with wire and beads? All right, let me show you. So check this out. What I'm about to show you is all made out of beads and wire. And so, of course, check this out. You guys know what this is? An elephant. Woo! Look, the wing. This is all made out of wire and beads, everything. Isn't that cool? I know I can create stuff like this, but I know without a shadow of doubt that you guys can create even better things. Remember, I started creating this with, without education at all. Imagine you kids who are in school, who are inspired by these amazing, wonderful teachers who teaches you every day. I'm sure you can come up with something even better than I have created. So you see this? Ah, you guys ready to see something else? All right, I'll put this elephant right here. I'm about to show you something else. This animal is actually what uh, my son is named after. It's a zebra. And my son's name is Tembo. His name means a zebra. So check this out. I created a zebra head. Now cool? This is actually you hang it on the wall. See this? A lot of work, a lot of intense work. But these are all tiny seed beads creating something like this. Not cool? A zebra head. Not wonderful? So I can just imagine what you guys can do. Ha! Huh. I think some of you get, are going to do some amazing things with your knowledge, your wisdom. Stay in school. School is important. School opens up your mind. School makes you tick differently. School allows you to see greater opportunities. And school helps you make right decisions in life, okay? So stay in school. School is important. Kids in Africa don't have opportunities like you guys have. School in Africa is not for free. They have to pay to go to school. A lot of kids don't even go to school. So one of the things my wonderful wife and I did was we started an organization and we it's called Dare to Share with Zimbabwe. And we are helping kids to go to school. So boys and girls like you, you can go to school and have their mind opened and be able to become better people in this world that we, we live in, okay? So education is very important. All right, so check this out. I got one more thing I want to show you. This thing is incredible. 
<coughs> this thing is big and I want you guys actually yes I want to see this thing here actually I'm going to take this out of the way and then I can show you <coughs> this thing check this out this is a truck made out of wire this is the truck but guess what the wheel turns and when I created this look it's got springs it's just like a car would do this is a truck but check this out it also has the trailer it's big check this out yeah so check this out so when I would be in the streets and I would see a truck like this and I would go whoa that is big and check this out I started thinking what if I create one out of wire and that's exactly what I did I created one but here's the cool thing um, you guys mommy and daddy takes you to the grocery store you drive there to the grocery store some of you grocery store is just about a few blocks away that's not that's not what it's like in Zimbabwe stores grocery store is like somewhere like even three miles like from from where I lived to the grocery store was three miles away and check this out I would actually pretend I was driving my car to the grocery store and I would push drive this I have a long stick that is when I'm stand up stand I stood up I can push it here and I can drive it everywhere I go okay as a toy and when I go to the grocery store check this out I would open this and I'll put my loaf of bread in here my milk my sugar and then I close it and then I pretend driving my car home and I'll drive it so distances because I'm having a fun joy pushing my toy was fun distance is not a big thing in Zimbabwe we walk everywhere so this is something I created out of wire boys and girls look yeah this is what I create I know you can create something better okay always use imagination you understand me stay off the co the, the computer and the phone come on go outside and play there's fresh air you get a, a beautiful suntan and you get to be uh, healthy because you're walking around you're sweating if you just sit on the couch and play on your phone and in your on your game on tv come on guys it's not gonna help you because guess what that game you're playing with somebody invented it well what are you gonna invent i want you to invent something because someday i can say i remember i inspired that child and they created this because of the inspiration I give to them. And that's what I want you to do. I want you to, to be inspired and I want you to be creative. Okay? So I'm going to put this down and I'm going to show you. The last thing I'm going to show you is something that is, ah, oh, you guys are going to love this. I know, boys, you're going to love this. And it's all made out of wire. And guess what? You're not going to believe it. It's big. Check this out. a motorcycle i made that with wire these wires here the color ones these are actually the you know where you plug in your tv where you plug in your games the wires they put in there are those wires they insulated so those are the wires i use to make my motorcycle and that beautiful the wheels are all out of wire. Everything you see is out of wire. And guess what? Nothing here was welded together. What you see on this motorcycle, it was done by hand. I did all of that by hand. And oh yeah, the handlebars turns, the wheels spin. But the question I get a lot from kids is, can you ride it? No. It's like me asking you this question. When you paint a house, you paint a picture of a house. Do you live in it? No, it's just for looks, right? This thing here, it's not to ride. This thing here is just for looks, okay? So this is what I created. I'm going to set it right here so you guys can look at it, continue to look at it. And, of course, I'm going to bring some of this here, put it right here so you can look at them. These things I created, like the zebra head, hang on here. All right, and then, of course, I'm done showing you my stuff. I know we got plenty of minutes. I, I did this on purpose because I want to talk to you. My message to you is very important, and I want you to listen. If you ever remember me, I don't want you to remember me of my wire art. I want you to remember me of what I'm about to tell you. 
okay? And what I'm about to tell you is very, very important. Look around you. Do you see the person who stands up in front of you every day and write on that board? Do you see them? Look at them. Yes, your teachers. Your teachers are the most important people in this whole world. But you know what funny thing is? Our society is messed up. We think the most important person in this life are the celebrities. They not. Have you ever tried to go to where the celebrities are? They rope around so you can't get to them. And then if you run to them and you fall, they don't even come to your aid to see how you bruise your knee and, and, and try to help you. Do you know that? They don't. They just keep on going and getting pictures taken. I said, but I tell you what, the greatest hero ever is your teacher. Have you ever noticed when you fall, who picks you up? Who dusts you off? And who puts a bandage on? Who tells you, come here and hugs you? It is your teacher. Your teachers are the most valuable people in this entire world. And some of you I know, including my great hero, Tembo, you got a great teacher in the world. He's homeschooled. His mama teaches him everything, right? And some of you, you have those teachers sitting next to you, standing by you. I want you from now onwards, I want you to value the teacher because they're the most important people in the history of the world. They are the ones who teaches us to become who we are. Hey, guess what? Those heroes, those celebrities, guess what? At one point, they sit where you're sitting. Did you know that? And then guess what? At one point, they were taught by a teacher. A teacher taught them to become what they have become. Okay? So teachers are very, very essential, very valuable. I want you to respect your teachers. Okay? Your teachers are important. So from now onwards, I want you to give your teachers the attention they need because they hold the key to your success. My teachers gave me the success that I have. And I'm so grateful for that. And I'm so thankful for that. Okay? If it weren't of my teachers, I wouldn't be here today. If it weren't of my teachers, they believed in me. Did you know kids can be mean? Kids were bullying me and teasing me and making fun of me. And check this out. I'd cry and I'll sit in a corner with nobody to play with. But there was only one person who would come to my rescue. My teacher. They would come and sit by me. And they'll come and eat lunch with me. And they'll come and comfort me. And they'll come and give me encouragement and say, it's okay, Jonathan. You're going to make it in life, man. I believe in you. You can do it. You're very talented. My teacher believed in me. Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I want you to know the most important person in your life is your teacher. Your teacher will give you everything you need to know. Guess what? The teachers, I want to say to you teachers, thank you so much because I believe in you, because you believed in me. And teachers, thank you for not giving up on me. And you know what? The most unselfish people in the world, in the whole entire world, are teachers. You know why? Check this out. Especially our state doesn't pay teachers enough money. Our teachers don't get paid a whole lot of money. Go to their lunch break. You'll see what they eat. They bring peanut butter sandwiches. Why? Because they can't afford it. Go to your dad's uh, mom's office and see what they eat. They go actually to a restaurant and eat lunch, proper lunch, that they pay a lot of money. But guess what? These teachers are not paid enough money. Well, <laughs> guess what? Your mama and daddy, the reason they have that good job, the reason they have a lot of money, the reason they have a good house, the reason they have to drive a better car than the teacher is because the teacher decided they were going to be giving all they have to a student. Check this out. If teachers were selfish, they would say, I know everything. I'm going to be a president. I know everything. I'm going to be an air aircraft mechanics. I know everything. I'm going to be all of this that I want to be in the life. But they said, no, I don't want to do that. I love these kids. I want these kids to flourish. I want these kids to become better. And you know what? They've given up their careers that they could have actually gravitated to and gave you the opportunity to become better, to become amazing. Just like your mom and dad are not teaching because they got a job that pays them five times than the teacher. It was the teacher who allowed them to have that privilege. If teachers were selfish, 
they would just say, nope, I'm not teaching. They don't pay me enough, and they'll be gone. And we will have no teachers. Guess what? That's not right. So from now on, I want you to give all the respect to your teachers because the teachers are the most amazing people. Today, I shout out to my teachers. They are the reason why I am successful in what I do because they believed in me and they believe in you too. So your teachers believe in you. Now, I know a lot of you have a lot of questions. I want you to start coming up with your questions and I wanna give you plenty of time for questions and answers because there's a lot of you students who are there with lots of questions. So I I'm gonna turn this to the, uh, the questionnaire. They have your questions, but before I do that, I also want you to show Every time I go to schools, they always ask me to write a book. And I'm like, I'm not a writer. I'm not a writer. Well, I had so many people encouraging me to write a book. I just wrote my first book. And this is the book I wrote. And it's on Amazon. And you can buy this. And all the process, you check this out. All the money, I send it to Zimbabwe, where I have orphans and widows that I feed and send to school. This is the book that I have. Okay? It, this book is funny. It's actually with pictures, it's illustrated. It's talking about one day of my life being stuck in a bucket. You wanna hear something funny? Buy this book, read it. But you know, one good thing is, you're not, so, you're not giving me the money, you're supporting orphans, kids like you who are young, who don't have opportunity to go to school, to be able to go to school, all right? Awesome, so now it's time for question and answer. Well, thank you so much for that amazing presentation. We have lots of questions from the students. They want to know how old were you were when you first started making your trash toys? All right. I was actually like five years old. At five, my mom and dad couldn't afford to buy me toys. So at five, I started creating my own toys. And do you still have any of those toys you made when you were very little? No, I never brought, because remember, I'm from Zimbabwe, and those toys, you wouldn't want to touch them. They're filthy because they've been played with, and they're dirty. So your immigration won't allow me to bring them here to America because they'll be considered a hazardous material. So how long does it take you to make a toy versus how long it takes you to make one of your sculptures? Okay, toys literally, like the ones I told, showed you about, the, the ones with the bottles, the cans here, they don't really take much time. It's only a matter of gathering the toys, punch holes, get wires through. So for some of you trying to create this, it may take you probably two hours. For me, I can create one of these in three minutes because I know what I'm doing. I've done it before, so it becomes easy. And the wire art? So the wire art, that's another story. Wire art, you really have to have a lot of patience, which I know a lot of you kids don't have a lot of patience. You know, you two minutes, mom is talking to a neighbor. Mama, I need to go. Mama, I need to go. Well, guess what? In Zimbabwe, we can stand in line for a loaf of bread four hours. We don't complain. It's an opportunity for us to talk to the person in front of us and the person behind us, and we create relationships. So I have a lot of patience. So creating these things here takes anywhere from uh, five hours to 800 hours or to... 2,000 hours. It's all a matter of, hey, patience. So why did you start working with wire? The reason I started working with wire was because that was what was available to me. It was the only source of something to have or create to make, to have fun, like a source of toy. Otherwise, if I didn't use wire, I would have never created the toys I have and I would have been bored and I would have been sitting at home doing nothing. So I decided to use wire and actually wire is, it's workable. And the cool thing is about making things as, a, as an artist, I make a lot of mistakes and check this out. Mistakes are the best thing that can ever happen to us because mistakes makes us better and mistakes makes us excel. If you don't make mistake, I don't know about you now, I make a lot of mistakes. Even in some of my sculptures that you see, there's a lot of mistakes in them, but a lot of people don't know that they are mistakes. They just think it's part of the project. So don't ever, ever fear to make mistakes. Mistakes are good for you, okay? They make you better. 
Do you have a favorite piece of artwork? Well, to be honest with you, all my art is favorable because my favorite, because you know why? Everything is not that I create is not the same as the, the other one I created. So they're all different. And so because of that, I put different energy and level in it and I love them all. So there's no such thing as my favorite toy or not favorite toy. And what's the biggest piece of art you've made? Oh, I'm glad you asked. I made a life-size motorcycle. Yes, a life-size motorcycle. Unfortunately, my website is not working right now, uh, but it's being worked on. And if, if once it starts working on, you can guys go on it. It's called jdwireartstudio.com. JD wireartstudio.com uh once it's i was in africa uh, not too long ago and i didn't pay for my services and they shut down my website but now i'm going to get it pay for it and then it can start working again you guys can go there and check it out and also on there it says uh learn more click where it says learn more once my website is on and guess what i was featured on wrl and there you can see my life-size motorcycle that would be cool for you to see. It's huge. It's big. It's like a real motorcycle. So that's the largest piece I've made. And the students want to know if you are just visiting, if you still live in Zimbabwe. Oh, no. Actually, I, I live here. I'm married. I have a wonderful wife and a, a wonderful son. Uh, my wife's name is Robin, and my son's name is Tembo. And he's 14, 14 years old, and we homeschool him. And so to Zimbabwe, I go. Uh, maybe once a year or twice a year to see the work we're doing in Zimbabwe. We started a nonprofit organization called Dare to Share uh, with Zimbabwe, where we take care of orphans and widows in Zimbabwe. We send them to school so that they can be educated just like you are, you guys are. And what made you start talking to students about your life and your work? Because when I first came to America, um, I realized that American kids didn't realize how tough life is all about. Sometimes they give up on it too soon on the little things. And I wanted to show them that, hey, look, you have it all made. You have all the opportunities at your hands. Use it, take it, uh, use it for your advantage and excel in life. Whereas in kids in Zimbabwe don't have that at all. And so I thought if I do that, I can make a difference in one child's life. And that's what's important to me. And I wanted to encourage kids throughout the United States. I've spoken to a lot of kids since 2000. And three, I've been speaking in schools and I've spoken to millions of kids. And that is what I want to do. I want to encourage kids. I want to make them realize they were created on earth for a purpose. And they need to realize what their purpose is, uh, is to encourage one another and we can make this, better, this a better world. And so they're wondering what kind of beads you're using? Yeah, I use seed beads and I also use the uh, plastic beads. Uh, and I go in schools and teach kids how to do this. So if your school wants to, um, wants to um, contact me, I'm, I'm registered with the uh, Raleigh Art Council. Uh, they have my number there as well. So you can actually reach out to me and I can schedule to come to your school in person and I can teach you how to make some of these things. Terrific. So we're going to have to um, stop questions in just a moment. But I did want to ask if students go away today with one thing you want them to remember and to associate with you, what, what do you want to share with them? Um, I want to say never give up. Never, ever give up. I've watched so many of you. Uh, I've been asked to come to some of you play t-ball. Uh, and here's what I've noticed. Uh, you make one swing, you miss, and then you pout. <laughs> I can't do this. And you try it a second time and you miss, and you just storm out, and you sit down, and you pout, you cry, and you've completely, forget, completely given up. Well, listen to me. Do you guys know the person that created the lights that we are now using, he, he tried 99 times. He failed 99 times. And now look, we have lights. I'm so glad that person is not you because you give up too soon. Please listen to me, boys and girls. Never give up. Always try. If someone else is doing it, you can also do it. 
You are smart enough to do anything that everybody else is doing. Not, not everything. You may not do it to the, to the best, but guess what? At least you tried. You need to figure out what your ability is, what your talent is. The talent you have, no one else has. You're the only one you have. The talent you are pursuing, that is their talent. Someone else's talent. Don't do that. Because they were created with that talent and they pursued it and then here they are now, they're doing well. How about you? You have a talent that you were given to make a difference, a dent into this world. So you need to figure what that is. That's why you're at school. Those teachers will help you, they'll mold you, they'll shape you. And then all of a sudden, the rough edges will start coming out. And then all of a sudden, your talent is here. And then your friend's talent is over here. They may not be the same. That's okay. Use your talent. Just let, let, I'm going to say this to you. How much does a tennis ball cost? It costs about $2, $5, right? How much does uh, a basketball cost? It costs $20, $30, right? You see, here's the thing. In your hand, a tennis ball is only 5 bucks, But in Serena Williams, the Venus Williams goes, guess what, how much that is? That's millions of dollars. A basketball, it's only, it's only $50 or $20, but in Michael Jordan, it's millions of dollars, billions of dollars. That's what it's about. In your hand, it may cost that less, but in other people's hands, it's a lot of money. What I'm trying to say to you is, you have a talent in you that was created in you. You need to figure out what that is and run with it. And one day, one day, we'll be looking at you and say, oh my gosh, this is amazing. This is awesome. Just like you say, oh, that athlete is awesome. No, you are awesome. Figure out what you were created for. And so my last thing is, please never give up. Never, ever give up. My son, Tembo, is a hero. He never gives up. You know what? He tries everything. And you know what? Some stuff is good. Some stuff is, is better, some stuff is excellent, some stuff is okay, but that's okay. So right now, he's a black belt, and guess what? He does Taekwondo, he's a black belt. And check this out, he's now playing hockey. He's playing hockey, and he is loving it. You know, because every time he fell, falls down, he doesn't give up. So I'm trying to say to you, never give up, and listen to those teachers. They're the amazing people. You get where you need to be. Thank you. So thanks again to Mr. Daniel. We're so grateful to have you here today. The students are so inspired. All the comments are really, really positive, And they're saying, we understand perseverance, perseverance. So that's so good to hear. I want to encourage everybody to also take advantage and watch our uh, the storytelling that's going on all day today. You can check that out at nc-aacc.com. You can sign up to watch storytelling. And thank you all very, very much for your participation and for being with us today. And remember, on Saturday, you can meet Mr. Daniel in person here at the North Carolina Museum of History for our 22nd annual African American Cultural Celebration. He'll be here with all of his things he showed you today, plus much more. And you might get to meet Timbo, too. So thank you so much, everybody. Take care.